day, dear friends. It is my pleasure that we share the word of God from our Sabbath school study guide for this quarter which is entitled In the Crucible with Christ. Let us pray. Our Father, our God, who art in heaven, we come before your throne of mercy. May you guide and lead us through this study such that we'll be able to see you who is invisible through the crucibles that we go through each and every day. This is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. We are on lesson number eight, seeing the invisible. Seeing the invisible. How can we see the invisible? How can we be sure about what we do not see? I am from the IT sector. All of us, we enjoy saving our data on cloud. But many of us, we have never seen this cloud. But we are sure that we are saving where it is invisible. Also, another one is in a computer. You always use a computer. You can only see what the computer is processing when you connect your monitor. But what is happening behind the scenes, it is invisible with our naked eye. In real terms, we normally say everything will be electronic and it's only the electronic part that is taking place. You cannot go inside the computer and retrieve a certain amount of data. So seeing the invisible, I think this, we can say it is by faith that we can see the invisible. Why? Because Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 and 2, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse number 2, For by it the elders obtained a good report. For sure, we have one of the elders, that is Moses. He illustrates in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 27, it says, By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. If you read it in NIV, it says, He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. My dear friends, we are called to see him who is invisible, not simply when things are good, but let us also see him when everything seems to be going wrong, when we are faced with these crucibles, when we are right inside and when we are really suffering because of the situations that are taking place in our lives. Therefore, for this reason, we need faith. Seeing the invisible. In our lessons, there are some truths that can help us to sustain us as we go through these crucibles. We can say these are some of the worst situations that we go through in lives, in our lives. Maybe truth number one. It is the truth about, truth number one, the truth about the Father's goodness. God who gave Jesus Christ to die on the cross for us. This is a truth which is uh, echoed by Romans chapter 8, verse 32. It says in the King, New King James Version, He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Many times we wonder whether God really loves us. 
we doubt his goodness because of the experiences that we are going through in our lives. These can be experiences that we are facing at work, experiences that we are facing in our families, experiences that we are facing in our communities, experiences that we are facing even within our own families. Let me tell you, the truth of God's generosity to us is seen in the death of Christ. This is very strong in us that when we see Christ dying on the cross for us, he was dying for our sins. So whenever we are faced with any crucible, let's see one who died on the cross for our sins. Truth number two, the truth about the power in the name of Jesus. Each time we pray, especially when we are concluding, we say, I pray in the name of Jesus. John 14, verse 14, Jesus says, If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. What I don't know is, when we are asking anything in the name of Jesus, do we believe that we are going to receive it? Sometimes when we pray in the name of Jesus, we open our eyes and expect everything to be different around us. But alas, it looks like life is still the same. There is nothing that has changed. So when we request in the name of Jesus, we must be certain that God's machinery of heaven is at work on our behalf. We must see the angels all around us answering our prayers. My dear friends, when we pray in the name of Jesus, we must see him who is invisible answering our prayers as he has said. Truth number three, the truth about the power of resurrection. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18 to 23, Paul talks about the power of God. What do these faces teach us about the power of resurrection? The life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it makes us legally right with God. It also shows us that one day we will be resurrected just the same way that Christ resurrected. It also placed Jesus at the right hand of the Father in a position of power and authority. Therefore, this truth about the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it must help us as his people that there is hope in that resurrection. Even through the crucibles that we are going through, we are seeing Christ who is able to resurrect us from any crucible that we are facing. Truth number four, the truth about God who cares, God who can carry all our worries. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, what are the things that cause people to be worried about? If you read Matthew chapter 6, from verse 25 up to 33, you'll see that many people, we are worried about food. We are worried about what we shall drink. We are worried about our clothes. But let me tell you, our Lord is with us even through these worries. He cares for us. He is our Father. At times we are anxious about our jobs. We are anxious about unexpected criticisms. We are anxious about feeling unwanted, feeling unloved. We are worried whether God has forgiven us. However, it may sound legitimate, it may sound troublesome, but there is nothing too hard with our God. 
First Peter chapter 5, verse 7, it says, Casting all your care upon him, to cast your cares, you are throwing your worries to the Lord. He cares for you to carry those worries. Therefore, can we still be faithful when God cannot be seen? Yes, let us be faithful when, go, when it seems that God cannot be seen. We may ask, where are you, O oh Lord? We can't see anything evident that you are still there. But let me tell you, our Lord will be there with you. Just like the Judeans when they were in Babylon, God was still with them. They felt neglected. They felt abandoned because of their sins. They were worried, but God was still with them. You can read from the book of Isaiah chapter 40. It has got a lot that tells us about God who was with them, though they could not see him. Verse 11, it says, He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with the young. Therefore, let us be faithful even when we feel God has disappeared. Even when we feel God has abandoned us, he is there with us. In conclusion, I will read from Testimonies for the Church, Volume 3, page 555 by Ellen G. White. Faith grows strong by coming in conflict with doubts and opposing influences. The experience gained in these trials is of more value than the most costly jewels. Seeing the invisible, even in crucibles. May God bless you as we reflect upon these truths that we must see our Father being with us in all situations, whether west, whether good, God is with us. Let us pray. Our Father, our God, our sustainer, our redeemer, we want to thank you that you are there with us in all situations, whether good or bad. When we are seeing that there is nothing good, when we may feel that we are abandoned, you don't care about us, but we are happy to know that you are there with us. Help us to see you who is invisible each and every time in all situations. This is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Music